Greetings. Happy New Year to you, viewer. It seems that once again I've received a grocery list of questions from someone in Islam. Okay, now please answer these questions. I am very serious here, by the way. 1. Is Jesus God or the Son of God? 2. If he is God, did God die on the cross, you know, like dead? 3. I will only ask this if you can actually answer the first two, as you said, with legitimate logic. The two questions asked are the same standard boilerplate of Islamic inoculation against rational thought. The third question will no doubt be as programmed, but I will endeavor in 2013 to be more patient and loving than I have been in the past. I recently watched a video on the 700 Club of a young YWAM missionary in an Iranian prison. It touched my heart in a big way, and I encourage you to find it and watch it, so it may minister to you as well. Anyway, in the spirit of patient, loving, teaching, and explanation, here is my answer to question one. Is Jesus God or the Son of God? Message one. Gladly, brother. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have videos answering questions like these, but it would take time for me to find them. So I will answer you here in a series of messages and make new videos later if I cannot find such answers already. Is Jesus God or the Son of God? In our human thinking and our human experience, a man cannot be one with his son. In fact, our minds tell us that any child is separate and unique from their parent. But it is not rational to think Almighty God exists exactly as men exist. In fact, the only things that we can know about Almighty God are the things that He reveals to us about Himself, and God has done this by the prophets. The message of the prophets reveal that God has a Son. Prophet David, Solomon, and Isaiah all speak of the Son of God. For reference, here are the verses that support that assertion. I did not include this in the original message stream. Psalm 2.7 I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Psalm 2.12 Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Proverbs 34 who has ascended up to heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name, if you can tell? Isaiah 9, 6 For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And Jesus, call him Prophet Jesus if you wish, said that he was the Son of God, meaning the Son of God foretold and revealed by the previous prophets. I did not summarize in the message sequence, but the statement, He was the Son of God, should need no summary. Their messages are in complete agreement and fulfillment, and the Word of God records many dozens of specific prophecies that Jesus fulfilled to the letter. So far, the human mind can accept a parent having a child, specifically a son. The revelation of God, however, goes beyond your human thinking and experience, just as God himself does, brother. The prophets also speak of the Messiah and the Son of God as being holy and eternal and describing the Son of God in ways that can only refer to Almighty God. And that creates a problem for our human mind, my friend. Our experience says that a human child is separate from a human parent. But God is not a human, with human limits. Is he? Not in the least way. Jesus himself said, The Father and I are one. And Jesus said that he, Jesus, had the power to grant life to men. John 10.30 I and my Father are one. John 5.21 For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickens them, even so the Son quickens whom he will. 
Jesus also said that he was with God before the creation of the world and shared God's glory with God. John 17, 5 And now, O Father, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. There are many, many other things that Jesus said which no man and no prophet would dare speak of themselves and claim about themselves, my friend. All these revelations and statements by Jesus establish a unity with God that goes beyond being a separate child. And even the Old Testament prophets reveal things about God, Yahweh, which the Lord Jesus fulfilled. Prophet Zechariah revealed that the Lord, Almighty God, Yahweh, would be pierced. Zechariah 12.10 And I, Yahweh, will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And if you believe the message of the prophets, you must ask, when, O God, would you be pierced by the Jewish people? Zechariah said God would be pierced by the Jews. Either you believe the prophets, or you do not. That is your choice. But Jesus was pierced on the cross, my friend. And Jesus being pierced on the cross is an established historical fact. In fact, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, his proof that it was him raised from the dead was that he let Thomas put his hand in the hole in his side where he had been pierced on the cross by the Roman soldier. That being the case, Jesus being pierced means that Jesus is the Lord or Yahweh who prophet Zechariah revealed. You can accept the truth of the matter or not, my friend. The choice is yours. For now, I will allow you to think and digest and try and ask questions about my answer to question one. When you think you understand this topic, I'll write a stream of messages answering question two. I thought that was a very sincere, honest, thorough answer to a sincere question. He did say, I am very serious here, by the way. But his behavior after that revealed he was not actually serious. I do not want a stream of messages. Just answer simply, what the heck, is Jesus God or God's Son? And in another response, answer me simply, is Jesus God or the Son of God? And did God die as he, as in actually dead? God is dead. Can you not even tell me that? And in another response, give me a straight answer. For example, if you ask me the same questions, I would say, there is no God but God, just one and only one. Unfortunately, his demand of a simple answer is indicative of Islam's retardation and programming. This poor Mohammedan is not really interested in thinking about an answer and learning the answer. And while I have the best of intentions, I reacted out of my flesh, again. I have answered question one. Almighty God is not simple, brother. If you demand a simple Allah, I think you need to worship a black rock kept in a room in a building. That is simple. The rock does not move. The rock is one. The rock has no sun. The rock cannot die. Be serious and I will answer you with more serious answers. Read all seven messages and think about them until you understand them, brother. I did not say accept them. I said understand them. If you have questions about the statements in the message, ask about the statements. Try to focus on the statements of the messages until you understand the statements. If they are too complicated, please let me know. And once again, humbled by my lack of patience, I must apologize to God for speaking harshly to someone he sent to hear the truth from me. Boy, it sucks to be a workman who is ashamed of his behaviors in public. But realize, we have the truth. We have it. And the only way they can see we have it is if God shines through us. They will know we are Christians by our love. 
which will include a humility that we are sinners saved by grace just like them. May the Spirit of God open your eyes to the light, your ears to the truth, and your heart to His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who forgives me daily of my screw-ups. Amen.